Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I am the author of the Break the Cycle website. In this brief video, I want to introduce you to some of the things you can do with the powerful communication skill of awareness. This is part of lesson two in the website, which is about effective thinking and communication. How aware a person are you? On a scale of one to ten, how would other people judge the degree of awareness that you usually show? Um, regardless of where other people would rate you, you can ask, well, sure, I'm aware. What are you aware of? One of the things that I've learned in studying communication dynamics for 40 years is there are four zones, so to speak, that everybody is currently aware of. In a dynamic social situation, these zones change, but just for your awareness, um, I can be aware, if I'm talking to you directly face to face, or even over the phone, I can be aware of you. What's going on in her or him? What is she thinking? What is she feeling? What is she needing? What is she doing? I have some degree of perception or slash awareness of that. The second zone that I can build or have is me. What's going on inside of me? What do I need? What do I think? What do I feel? What am I doing? A third zone, which is the best zone from a communication standpoint, is what's going on in her or him and what's going on in me and what's going on between us. Therapists do that all the time. That's why therapists exist because most people don't cultivate this kind of awareness. The fourth of four zones that you can become aware of is I'm not aware of you or me or us. My awareness is off somewhere in space. I'm thinking about the Inca rebellion in 1452. I'm thinking about what happened to my grandfather when he came over from Poland. Um, so there are four zones of awareness. None of them necessarily are good or bad, except if you're trying to have a meaningful conversation with another person, for instance, you're trying to do problem solving, it's best to have a two-person awareness bubble. I'm aware of you and I'm aware of me. Real time. Think about that. Think about the last bad communication experience you had, dissatisfying, frustrating. What was the awareness bubble that you had? Were you aware of the other person, yourself, or both of you? What was the awareness bubble that they had? You, them, or both of you? If both of you have a two-person awareness bubble, you have the best chance for effective communication. Here's another thing you can use the powerful skill of awareness for. As you know, our emotions are normal, human, and they vary all the time. They go from mild to major. An analogy that I've been taught is to say our emotional level, the intensity of the, feel, the moments, emotions we're feeling at this moment, can be likened to a thermometer. It can be low to high. Well, so what? If you're trying to talk to somebody whose E-level, emotional level, is, quote, above their ears, they can't hear you. Their emotions distract them from hearing fully what you're trying to say. They cannot grasp what you're thinking, feeling, wanting, doing. So it's useful if you're in a tough situation with another person who is upset. Upset means high E-level, emotional level. Notice that with the skill of awareness and then say, can I tolerate this or do I need to help them bring their E-level down? There is a way to do that. One of the other skills in lesson two, of the six skills that I've explained in this lesson, is called empathic listening. It's also called active listening or mirroring. It's very simple. If you focus on the other person who might be upset <clears throat> and you listen carefully and watch them, 
and periodically you say back to them what you see and hear and sense. So you feel, so you think, what upsets you is you were wishing, you hoped, what puzzled you, what troubled you, notice the word you. You're not talking about wonderful I, you're talking about your partner. Send back empathic listening. Brief one sentence or two sentences max. Acknowledge what you feel they're trying to express. Guess what? When you do that, human nature says if you do it often enough and you're sincere, it's not a gimmick or a ploy, their E-level will come down below their ears. Then you can resume problem solving, normal conversation, disclosing your stuff. So if you notice the other person's E-level is up, choose to use empathic listening. Listen with your heart. Watch their E-level come down, resume normal conversation. That's something you can do with the skill of awareness. Another important thing you can do with awareness and reason to cultivate your awareness in social situations is to observe and become aware of what is something that can be called an R message. I propose that people in conversation are trading four messages at once all the time and our amazing brains decode these messages often without our even being aware of it. The messages are what are you and I thinking, what are you and I feeling, what are you and I needing, and what are you and I doing? Another message that is embedded in these four is invisible and yet it controls all our conversations. It's exceptionally important and powerful. I wonder if you would agree that one thing that is essential for two people in conversation is for each of the two persons to feel steadily respected. Respected by themselves, respected by the other person. We constantly are evaluating with our partners. Do you respect me? Do you respect me now? Are you respecting me now? Do I respect myself? How about now? How about now? We're constantly evaluating respect. If we get a message from inside of us or the other person, I don't respect you. Guess what? Our E-levels go up, our hearing stops. So it's useful to use awareness in important conversations to make a judgment. What's the R message I'm getting from you? There are only three possibilities. One R message says that the other person feels they're one up. They're more important than you, you're insignificant. The second R message you can get is they feel one down or insignificant and they feel you are more important than them. The third R message is you, I see you as a person of equal worth and dignity to me. We are equal equal here. Some people say there is a fourth R message possible, which is, you're a non-person, I don't even see you. I don't care if you've got thing, feelings or needs, uh, you're invisible to me. The point here is, use the skill of awareness in important conversations with adults and kids. Take a look at the respect message that you're receiving and that you're sending. If either one of you is getting a one up or a one down R message, expect your E levels to go up, hearing to be impaired, and the communication effectiveness to go down. <clears throat> Once you're aware of that, you can take some steps to at least acknowledge that. For instance, you might say to your partner with good eye contact, calm voice, you know, as you're speaking to me, I'm feeling disrespected. Notice the language. I'm not saying, you're disrespecting me. That's an attacking phrase. It's easier for the other person to hear if you say, I am feeling disrespected. You're the expert on how you're feeling. Okay? So that's one thing you can do if you're getting, if you're feeling put down, 
by an aggressive or indifferent or unaware partner. Look them in the eye and say, I'm feeling really disrespected right now. Don't name call, don't accuse, don't blame. Simply give that information, be quiet, and see what they do with it. They may or may not change. That's a whole separate topic. If you are sending a one-up or a one-down R message to another person, and, he, and they may call you on it, or you may notice it yourself, what can you do? Usually it means you are taken over. You're being ruled by a, quote, false self. I refer you respectfully to lesson one in this website to find out what are false selves and what can you do about them. The alternative is to have your true self. When your true self is leading your personality, you are most apt to have an equal, equal R message and E levels that are below your ears. So these are several things you can do with the very powerful skill, communication skill of awareness. The other five skills depend on this one. Have you ever thought of intentionally working to widen, deepen, and improve your awareness? You can. I invite you to study lesson one about your true self and lesson two about improving the effectiveness of your thinking and your communication. If you have any feedback that you'd like to offer on these lessons, the website, the web pages, the concepts, me, <clears throat> there's a link at the bottom of every web page of the website that says contact. Click that link. It will give you an opportunity <clears throat> to give me some feedback. I'm also available to uh, contact directly if you choose to do that. This website is about breaking the unawareness that is part of the psychological wounds and awareness cycle that cripples most families and most people. So I invite you to lower your unawareness, raise your awareness, study these lessons, and enjoy communicating and thinking more effectively. Thanks for watching.